welcome everybody to another episode of the OC Spotlight. The one show, maybe the only show that shows you the most incredible people doing the most amazing things right here in your own backyard. And today, well, prepare to have your mind completely blown here. Um, every time we get this gentleman in here and his guests, I spend half the show going, what? Why? No, how are you going to do that? And today is no different. We have with us the great Howard Leonhardt from Leonhardt Ventures right here at UCI's Applied Innovation Center here. They were a uh, are you guys still here? Or did you move out? I don't remember if you're. We're absolutely still here. Okay. The University Lab Partners, which is within uh, UCI. Exactly. And uh, Howard has this amazing background. Just give us a two second of all the. Uh, I know you've invented a thousand things and a hundred million patents, but mostly <laughs> in heart, like heart valves and stuff. Is that what you were prim principally known for? Or made your original splash on? Original splash, big splash, was uh, development and invention of uh, aortic stent graft for repairing aortic aneurysms without surgery. That's how Albert Einstein passed away, Lucille Ball, Jack Ritter. Uh, we've lost some wow, great people really? to aortic aneurysms, and uh, we uh, developed a way to repair those without surgery. Well, I wish I'd known you back in the day because my dad, my late father, that's what he passed away from two years ago. And he went in and had surgery the first time, and then it didn't last. And and he had an what do you, an aneurysm is like a little bubble in your blood vessel or something. And then before it bursts, you got to go in and cut it out and put in a new one. And it takes hours and hours and hours to s graft this new thing in there. You figured out a way to do it without surgery. So that was amazing enough. You couldn't just stop there. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> You couldn't just sit in the Bahamas and collect your checks or uh, say, I, I made my uh, one contribution to science here. Instead, you took on a topic that we talked about the last time. You've taken on the, the ultimate topic, the fountain of youth. How do we live longer? And not just add years, but as you guys say, add life to the years. How do you extend life? Talk about that just briefly here. That's what you keep researching here at UCI, various ways to extend human life. That is correct. Uh, we're working towards developing a womb for adults, a total A body. womb for adults. You're just a talking uh, quote machine here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, we're not quite there yet, but uh, what we're doing now and what we're going to introduce today is uh, utilizing bioelectric protein expressions to regenerate skin, hair, restore joint health, uh, body toning, and uh, sexual health. And then we have a program for health span optimization that we can implement now. It's not quite a womb for adults, but we have pieces of what's going to be in the future, a total body regeneration chamber, but we can offer some of it uh, right now that's gotten through the FDA and, and is a little bit more down to earth and available right away. And to put this into practice, you're pioneering and opening up, I thought it was just one. Now it's like a hundred of these medical med spas, right? Uh, let's talk about that a little bit. That's gonna be called uh, what's the name of it? Uh, Lion Heart, because your name is re really L Leon Hart. Uh, the, what is that? The German way to spell this or something here? But you're going to call it Lion Heart Longevity and Wellness Med Spots, and, and that has a few other things to work into it here. But you you were going to open one in Orange County, and now you're going to a whole bunch of them. We're planning to open up 124 locations over the next uh, 60 months, over the next five years. Wow. Okay, now, all of that just sets the stage for another uh, mind-blowing guest here, your friend. Why don't you introduce Dr. Sanj, let me see if I'm gonna get this right, you told me how to do uh, Dr. Sanjay Bodraj? Bodraj, yeah. Bodraj. I, I tell so people, close. the better, the, the more difficult the last name, the better the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Bodraj, that's right, I got, forgot the G that's in right. there. Bodraj. And Dr. Sanjay Bodraj was a cardiologist. That's yeah. a pretty heavy uh, thing. That's not a dermatologist. No, no offense against dermatologists <laughs> or a foot doc, podiatrist or something, but I always thought those were easy. Was, uh, wasn't that a Seinfeld episode? <laughs> I think there was something yeah. like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cardiologist. That's the serious one. Dealing with the heart. And you moved from that into this. Why? Yeah, so I was an interventional cardiologist. So not only was I focusing on cholesterol and blood pressure, but I was the actual person doing procedures. So in fact, endo endovascular stents were a common part of my toolbox for helping right. take care of my patients. And over the years, about f after the first 15 or 20 years, I realized, you know, there's got to be something more that we can do for patients, right? Why are we waiting until the whole house is on fire yeah. 
to blow out the candle that we know is <laughs> causing the issue. Yeah. And the way that the current healthcare space is, we are paid to do things, but we're not really paid to prevent. And when you ask people, patients, clients, what they want, they don't want to have diseases in the first place, right? right. So that kind of led to a paradigm shift for me moving out of the more conventional uh, cardiology type practice into a more what's called functional medicine practice where we we're able to use diet and lifestyle to help optimize health. An essential component of that is longevity medicine. And that's when Howard and I met as I was on my journey. Um, and I absolutely loved what he was doing because the whole idea that I think we should have in healthcare is not to add outside chemicals to our body mm -hmm. and toxins, but rather optimize our internal healing processes be it through diet, be it through lifestyle, be it through bioelectric signaling, your body has everything it needs to heal itself. We just have to activate it in the right way. I've been waiting for you for years here because I have been preaching this and, and saying to anybody who listen, I watched my late father die of his uh, aneurysms and the complication it caused and the, and the cancers and all the other stuff, took my mom and aunt, all these people that I took care of at the end of life. And their last years were longer. Lucky then they got to be in the 90s, but those last 10, 15 years, Parkinson's and yeah. cancer and, and dementia, and it wasn't fun at all to watch any of this stuff here. Well, and you're absolutely right. And I think one of the things that we have to think about is reverse engineering what our lives should look like in those last 10 years, mm -hmm. right? I would, I'd have patients in my clinic, their entire social calendar was doctor visits. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but for me, I'd rather be outside at the beach surfing, doing anything, anything. other than being in a doctor's office. Yeah, right. And so what we need to realize is the habits, the lifestyle, the things that we do today when we're functional can really help us extend that time, a concept that's now being called health span, mm -hmm. which you kind of touched on, which is really focusing on being as highly functional as you can until your last days, as opposed to just having more last days where you're bedridden. All my parents were interested in is lifespan. How long? Right. You're saying how healthy. You, you don't want to just add on years if they're bad years or whatever. And then I've read, maybe maybe Howard would know more of this, uh, when they study how much, how much you spend, I hate to put it in money terms, but how much you invest, how much you spend to on your health care. I don't spend much when I'm young, most of us, a little more as I start to get older, but isn't it like 90, I, I don't know the exact number, but like 90% in the last 10 years or something here? Well, I think it's even even in more the last that? year, yeah. not last 10 years. And so there's a disproportionate um, you know, expenditure of healthcare dollars in that sense. But really, if we can take care of ourselves, right? You can be, you know, I want to go out, you know, I want to, I want to die on a Tuesday and be out surfing on Monday. Like that's, <laughs> yeah, that's right. what I want for myself. I don't want right. to be in a bed, you know, everyone being sad. I want him to say, you know what? He went out doing exactly what he loved doing. And I think yes. most people in the world would not want to be in hospice on palliative care. You know, this slow dwindle. All that to my mother was, yeah. a, was a fun person not to, not to dwell on this, but she got Parkinson's disease and that led to dementia. Then she started falling all the time. And it was one thing after another in those last few years, last 10 years, the last couple of years, especially, she's just like, let me die. Right. And one of the things that we have to realize is that a lot of these diseases are, are essentially dysfunctions of the body's ability to repair itself, to heal itself. And that's mm -hmm. where, you know, when I met Howard, um, I don't know if he's talked about clothoproteins before, but extensively, <laughs> and I, a word that it just came up in uh, my dinner conversation last night. How about those clotho? As proteins? it often yeah. does. Yeah. How about that clotho? But, but the remarkable thing is, is that we have the ability through the technology of Leonhardt, uh, Leonhardt longevity yeah. to activate these genes, these proteins, these you know, the, the, the kind of, um, the, the maintenance crew of your body, so to speak, right. We can actually activate them to repair your DNA, to re repair your body, to repair your kidneys, to help your heart. I mean, there, when you look at the science behind this one little molecule, it's amazing of all the things that it can do. Repairing kidneys in particular can take away calcium from heart arteries in animal models, but, but, you know, now we have the, the technology has finally caught up to what Ponce de Leon was looking for in yeah, Florida, right? He right. was looking for the fountain of youth. And, and now we have the ability to use science to actually make this happen. So Howard, you only have two minutes to tell us again. You can spend two days, two months 
going into great detail and quoting studies and uh, talking about their own research. But when did this idea, what is a clotho protein, and when did you discover the power and importance of this first? And then last, how did you, how do you stimulate those? How do you turn those on? But first, what the heck are they? A group of Japanese researchers discovered clotho by accident in 1997. Uh, they were doing uh, mice experiments, and they discovered that if they blocked clotho expression in mice, they died 80% younger. And on the way to dying 80% younger, they ran into all the aging-related elements that we like to stay away from, loss of hair, sexual health, cognition, memory, something, the beginning of Parkinson's, right. uh, skin cancers, all, many type of cancers. And then they decided, okay, uh, let's experiment with supplementing clotho. And they, and they supplemented clotho in these mice. And those mice Add to it, but lived 30% yeah. longer. So normal, uh, you supplement, you live 30% longer. If you block the clotho or if you're low, you die 80% younger. But more important than mice, a study came out in 2022 uh, analyzing humans. And it indicated a 31% higher risk of all-cause mortality if you're low in circulating clotho. So All low is defined mortality. as- All-cause mortality. Did you hear that one, folks? Yeah, right. <laughs> that includes cancer, heart, car accidents, everything yeah. is yeah. all-cause mortality. Right. It, it, it really is amazing protein, and it is hard to summarize, but from the tip of your head to the bottom of your toes, if you're low in clotho, it starts going wrong earlier. Loss of hair, loss of memory, cognition, uh, early onset dementia, right. uh, even things like depression and addiction. 10x higher chance to be an alcoholic or addicted to something if you're low on clotho. Low is 588 PG per ml or lower. And what we do in our technology with bioelectric stimulation, we get with specific signals your muscles to secrete clotho that then circulates in your whole body up to your brain and, and everywhere. Now you get that naturally with exercise, mm -hmm. but with Exercise is one of the great benefits of exercise. All the doctors tell you exercise. Right. Well, one of the reasons, the scientific reasons that exercise is so good for you is through the secretion of clotho into your bloodstream from your muscles while they're being exercised. But unfortunately, you only increase your circulating clotho about 3% if you're very vigorous with exercise, two mm -hmm. or three times a week. If you add heavy weights, you might get that to 6%. Our technology is coming in at 40%, 150%, sometimes as high as 230% increase. Uh, so basically every session with us is the same as exercising 100 times. All right, so let's see if we can dive into this. This is one that gets hard to follow, <laughs> folks. All right, so there's a protein that in your body that they've come across that if you turn it on, if you stimulate it, if there's more of it, your what was the statistic 30 percent less or whatever of all you live 30 percent longer or you, yeah 30 percent of uh, you live longer all right and you live better so the idea is how to do this and one way is exercise you're talking about what i've had other people in here talking about but on a whole nother scale electric bio electrical stimulation you put something on it stimulates your muscles to start what contracting and expanding or whatever here it's sim it it it's like you're exercising, but you're not running. You're not lifting weights or whatever. You're getting the same benefit by bioelectrically stimulating something. I, you lost me on that. It's a suit. Is it a is it a sensor? What do you put on your body here? We do have a suit, and it does have contraction stimulations. But our particular clotho and Foley statin expressions are not in the contraction mode. It's below the contraction mode. So it's very specific signals that tell the DNA within your muscle cells to produce RNA, which means protein, right. and to control the membrane of the cells to let the clotho out. So we communicate with the cell membrane, we communicate with the DNA, and we basically give those cells instructions to secrete clotho out of your muscle into your uh, bloodstream. And, and it actually is not in the contraction mode. Those particular signals are below the contraction mode. Now with our suit, we recommend 20 minutes of exercise in the contraction mode, which right. is exactly what you described, but then we have 35 minutes of clotho expression and five minutes of Foley statin expression. We also can provide it just by electrodes. We've all probably got electrodes when we got an ECG for yeah. heart monitoring. Right. Well, these are very special electrodes, like TENS electrodes that are more durable. And uh, we can apply those to your knee to get rid of your knee osteoarthritis. We can apply it to your hair, to head to, to grow hair. hair. From your knee to growing hair. I mean, those yep. seem to be unrelated. But you found that, I think you said this the last time, maybe I'm overstating this, that just about all of these things that go wrong in our body, 
it's just you got to fine tune the electrode to to a certain what is it a frequency to emit a certain something that then turns on the gene that'll fix that. Well, and interesting, you know, one gene in one location may have a different effect than the gene in a different location, right? So your hair cells, stimulating your hair cells to grow is different than stimulating your knee, the cells in your knee to produce more uh, uh, more cartilage, right? Right. Or, or reduce inflammation. And so, I don't think you could, re- I, I have a tore of cartilage when I was a kid. Yeah. It's still torn to this day. I didn't think cartilage could repair itself. But Howard told me the last time, oh, we think we can get the, you need some water over there? Is that what we're looking for here? Well, one of our colleagues is up oh, there. Oh, out there. We're in a bubble we've here. Got a fan. We've got a fan. We've got a fan. So uh, can you stimulate the growth of things I didn't think could grow? Your heart muscle, your cartilage, your hair, Howard? Can we stimulate the things that we thought just ain't growing anymore here? The short answer is yes. Uh, the long answer that uh, we would qualify that answer with is that uh, if it's a very serious breakdown, like a major heart attack with uh, major damage to the heart muscle, right. just stimulation alone probably is not going to be enough. And what we do in those cases, we implant a pump under the skin and we refill that pump every day with clotho expressing stem cells and a mixture, a nutrient hydrogel that includes amniotic fluid, exosomes, Wharton's jelly, uh, basically like a miracle grow for cells. And we have that infused <laughs> grow for cells. Wow, into okay. the damaged heart or the damaged kidney or the damaged pancreas or the damaged liver. But that's not what we're talking about in our med spas. That's that's to be done in hospitals. At the med spas, right. we're, we're focused on the big six. Okay, the big six. Skin, hair, body, uh, body toning, toning uh, sexual health, and joint health. And then we have this health span optimization protocol that it would be the uh, the number six. So a health spa is just that. It, it, you don't have to have a prescription to go in, like you're going in to get Botox to remove wrinkles, or you're doing other sorts of things to, you know, there's all sorts of ideas of how to get your hair to grow, or how to get your sexual organs functioning again. And I mean, those are the common complaints as you start to get old. Things ain't working. The skin right. looks terrible. The hair looks terrible. The body looks, the skin starts to fall apart and sexual health goes down the toilet and joint health. Oh my goodness, everything hurts and aches to walk. You're going dealing with that basic because your vision is bigger than this. I, it, you got to take a while to get there and you got to go through lots of approval hurdles to make these claims before the FDA will say, yeah, okay, I think that could work. But you're really aiming at what do you call the X prize or something here, where you're going to significantly in there, there's a prize out there like the prize that was once offered to go to the moon or do other sorts of things. There's a fund that's trying to encourage people, if I remember correctly, to significantly extend life and to prove that you can extend life. Is that overstatement? That is true. But first, I'd like I'd like to mention that we actually won uh, December in this building that we're in downstairs on the first floor was the Allergan Aesthetics University Lab Partners uh, Innovation of the Year Award wow. for advancements in medical aesthetics by a startup. They were particularly impressed with our advancements in skin and hair regeneration. Allergan Aesthetics is based here in Irvine, one of the world leaders, now Huge. part of uh, AbbVie. Allergan started Botox, right? They, yeah. they started That's, Botox, but right. they're moving uh, more into regenerative aesthetics, and that's why we think we, we won that coveted competition. We were very grateful. Uh, they have uh, given us a, what they call a golden passport. It was meant to be like a golden ticket in yeah. uh, Willy Wonka, <laughs> and uh, we get a whole bunch of benefits with this golden ticket. And In fact, part of the golden passport is we get to compel up to 15 of their scientists and their business people into a room at their headquarters in Irvine later this year where we'll have a chance to present our data and to talk about further collaboration. So that one we actually won. Okay. Uh, now we've entered a bigger prize, and that's called the $101 million X Prize for Health Span Extension. $101 million is being offered if somebody can do this. The largest prize uh, ever put up for anything in the history of mankind. And we think we have a, a reasonable shot to, to win. We're often criticized for having something for every organ in the body where most regular medical companies focus just on the liver or Absolutely. one thing. Or the knee or something, right? Yeah. But luckily, this contest, the organizers have indicated that if you just fix the liver but the rest of the person's body isn't better, you're not going to win this contest. You might win the liver foundation contest, but this one is meant to be holistic. Mm -hmm. Uh, They want to see 
at least 10 years of health span extended, and they want that person, after whatever your protocol is, to be having a good cognition, good memory function, preferably a full head of hair, full sexual health. <laughs> they can't uh, be in a coma, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we think that that favors us because we've developed a platform that can be applied. And, you know, we mentioned Clotho as one of the proteins, but I should mention that we have over 70 protein expressions, but it would take 70 hours to no, talk about it. So please. we decide to only talk about uh, our prized uh, protein expression. And I got to give you two minutes on the other crazy thing that you do. I say crazy because it sounds like just something out of science fiction here. Were you taking, is it platelet rich blood, plasma? But you, people have done that. You're now doing something else, platelet rich. What is it? What's the other one? Fibrin. Fibrin. What the heck is doctor? What is fibrin? And there's another word I never heard of before. <laughs> All these weird science things, right? So, yeah. so what I love about what we're able to do, right? Like I said, is is use the body's own ability to heal itself. So, a lot of um, a lot of orthopedic surgeons and others are trying to use something called platelet-rich plasma or PRP. Your mm -hmm. heard, listeners have probably heard of. Yeah. Um, but and PRP, you go get this injected. And you go body. and you know you go. They they take a blood sample and they get these cells. They put them back in and they work okay. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. They work okay. But the idea behind platelet-rich fibrin is that we are isolating those healing cells and through bioelectric stimulation, not just isolating them and injecting them back in, which PRF just by itself is better than PRP. However, what we can do um, is actually add that bioelectric signaling that Howard's talking about and supercharge them. So now you've got supercharged healing cells going into your joints, going into your skin, going into your whichever area of interest and, mm -hmm. and supercharging that healing process. Because a lot of the aging that happens is, like I said before, your body's ability to heal itself gets less efficient. Mm -hmm. So now we are able to supercharge that, extract them from your body. So we still take a blood sample, spin out the cells that we need, put them back in and then supercharge them. And they just go to town. They, they are all about fixing and fixing everything in sight. So do you have to map the body genetically? Do I have to know what my DNA and all this stuff looks like here? Because you talked about doing that too as part of your health uh, regimen, your health span program here. Yeah, so not necessarily a PRF, um, because again, we're getting the cells from you, okay. right? So so we're not getting donors and, and whatnot. We're, we're using your own cells. And that makes them what's called biologically compatible so that mm -hmm. your body doesn't fight them. And right. And you've got them there already. But as we talk about health span optimization, there's so many different aspects of this. Kind of in my practice and, and what I do now is I really focus on cardiometabolics, um, which is kind of insulin signaling and, and weight loss and optimizing hormones and inflammation. Mm -hmm. But but part of that as well is understanding, believe it or not, everybody is different. Can you believe that? No. Well, yeah, Come on, we're, not, thought, we're not all the one same. One pill, and, one and, shot. And no, one well, and that's how thing. medicine has treated you for so long, right? Yeah. Is that is that you know we have these huge clinical trials of ten thousand people, five thousand in one arm, five thousand in another. You know, they they massage the stats to show a small absolute difference, <laughs> and they show a big statistical difference, and now all of a sudden everyone you know is on medication X Y Z. Yeah. But in in what I like I'm, to call I'm on cholesterol, yeah, well, statins, and and, stuff, and right? those are great examples, right? Because maybe not everybody needs to be on a cholesterol medicine. I am not saying they're useless, but we need to be smarter about this. And or, or the in, same medicine. I know Allergan and all these people well, want to produce a pill of a thing and sell it to as many people as possible, but maybe well, we all don't need exactly the same thing. We or need... our bodies don't respond all exactly to the same yeah, thing, right? right? So so now, if you think about the Human Genome Project, right, that was millions of dollars and so many so many years to, to sequence the human genome and mm -hmm. make sense of it. Now you can spit in a little vial, send it off to a lab, and in two weeks we know every single gene that you've got. Yeah, and so, who your relatives were three centuries right, ago. And, right, and who may have been a serial killer in, in, you know, in the 1800s. Like, yeah. you can get amazing information from this DNA. But now what we're seeing in, in, in general, but particularly what we do is, you know, Howard has a different ancestry than I do, mm -hmm. right? And Paul, you've probably got, you're, you don't look very Indian to me. I'm Indian, <laughs> right? So, so we no. definitely have different genetics, right? And we're realizing that we have targeted therapies that we can optimize based on your genetic profile. You are something called epigenetic profile. So the things that your ancestors did, right? That, yeah. you know, your the life experiences that your great, great grandmother have affect mm -hmm. your DNA, believe it or not. That's right? hard, so we hard see that in like Holocaust survivors and, and POWs and things like that. But 
the idea here is that would be we, a show into itself. I'd love to <laughs> I'll explore be that. Happy to come back anytime to talk about that. But the idea yeah. for us is that we now have the ability to look at your fingerprint and come up with what are the best foods for you to eat? What is the best type of exercise for you? Why do you not respond to something that some like a diet plan? Like we've all had this, right? Where we have right. a, a buddy. I used to do CrossFit all the time. And there were a lot of people trying every single diet there Absolutely. was. And so one guy would go on, you know, carnivore diet. One guy would go on paleo. I can't even keep paleo. track of all these How things. How many right? times they came in and did paleo? Right. Eat like a caveman. Right. right. Yeah. And, and, and they would be awesome, right? They would lose tons of weight and I would just gain weight. I'd puff out, right? Well, you know what? Like my body is different, right? Mm -hmm. So, so now what we have the ability to do is based on your genetics, not just predict because there's a certain degree of uncertainty there, but rather based on your genetics, we will know what's going to work with you and what's not going to work with you. We will know what your circulating clotho gene expression is. We will know what your metabolic factors are and how to alter your diet, how to change your lifestyle. Maybe you need stress. Who knows? It's 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 become a much more precise science now. I'm flashing the signal. We're coming down to the last five minutes. We have just flown through this in a very <laughs> rapid fashion here, folks. If your head's spinning like mine, we're going to send you some place in a minute to go check out more about this stuff because it does sound, dare I say, almost unbelievable. For years, Americans have wanted the impossible. I know I should exercise more. I know I should eat better. I know I should do all these things. Just give me a pill or a prison. Just give me something and poof, get the car back on the road and and keep going. But all I, all that does is just suggest sort of, you know, um, somehow patching it together to hold on a little longer here and get a few more miles out of the car before it explodes. You're actually talking about something much deeper, Howard, which is regenerative somehow. We're going to grow hair. We're going to grow cartilage. We're going to grow skin. We're going to somehow the body's going to regenerate itself. Is there a limit to how much the body can regenerate itself? You're already pushing the limits, it seems like here. Because the body deteriorates over time. We accept that, and eventually you die. It breaks down like an old car. You're trying to not just patch it together longer. You're trying to have it regenerate itself from within and somehow extend life itself. That just sounds mind-boggling. We're trying to build data that would support the claim that we can reverse your age inside and out 10 years or your money back. And, uh, <laughs> that, 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 That's that a would... bold claim. That we would, can not just extend it, but reverse something here. Put you back the way you were. That would be qualified by biomarkers and, and certain tests. Uh, this is the but, goal. This is what you shoot. This is the moonshot you're shooting for. Clearly, exactly. you're not there yet. And that's the beginning of it. It can possibly get pushed to 20 years. After a while, past 20 years, it starts to get to even where uh, I would question whether it's possible or not. But right. The med spas are kind of uh, down to earth. It's it's going to be fueled by regenerative aesthetics. So they say in the med spa industry, skin brings people in, uh, skin, hair regeneration, hair removal, uh, joint health, sexual health. Those uh, are the common complaints everybody has, and we're going to we're willing to pay money. This isn't through insurance, right? So people are paying this out of their own pocket to do whatever this would ever this be in, covered under insurance someday. We're not pushing for insurance, so this is more uh, pay out of your own, own pocket. And if you come in with, let's say, uh, your sexual wellness is not where you want it to be. Right. Through bioelectric stimulation. Why is everybody bioelectric... looking at me in the room here? <laughs> <laughs> You're the focal point. You're just, we're looking to you for guidance. <laughs> through bioelectric I admit stimulation. nothing, by the way. Here. I admit nothing. <laughs> so we're going to stimulate down there, and our goal with the stimulation is recruit stem cells to that organ to grow blood vessels, not just blood vessels that leak and are temporary, but large blood vessels that have true endothelium lining. They don't leak and they provide good blood flow down there. We want to regenerate the muscle. We want to regenerate the nerve connections. So it works again like when I was 18? Exactly. Come on. <laughs> maybe, come on. maybe. But <laughs> if you come into one of our Lionheart Longevity and Wellness Med Spas, we're not going to stop there because that's really not what Sanjay and I wanted to do when we started this. What we no. want is to say, this is an indication. You're lucky that this is like an oil warning light. You use the yeah. car as an example. Right. That, and we'll take care of that. But what we'd rather have you do is enter into our health span optimization program. Mm -hmm. Get your blood tested, your DNA tested, your breathing tested, your sleep tested, and uh, go get a, a MRI at a local partner we have called Ezra, a whole body MRI. Wow. We'll use that information to develop a customized health span optimization. And unfortunately, we can do a lot with technology. We can even 
turn your beer belly into six pack abs with limited exercise. Ah. But to truly I embrace... signed up. I'll sign up right now immediately. <laughs> to, to truly yeah. embrace Get rid of the dad bod here and to the right. <laughs> health span optimization, Paul, you have to put some effort in. And that yeah. that is gonna be in embracing a healthy diet and embracing some exercise. You Clearly. just cannot do it all with technology alone. We haven't right. gone that far with it yet. But what we have is supervised diets and supervised uh, exercise. So when you put this bod stim suit on, mm -hmm. we know in the cloud, Dr. Sanjay is going to know that you worked out two or three times a week as he suggested to you mm -hmm. and how long you, you worked out and what signals you had on during that, that workout. This is a supplement and, to what this doesn't replace normal uh, exercise and diet stuff. This is in addition to it. You can go in and stimulate it rapidly on a short term basis because we all know I should eat better and I should certainly exercise more. Why don't I? They say exercise is medicine. Well, we say exercise with the bot stem suit is super medicine. There you go. But it really needs to be put all together under a supervised program. And that, that, that's one of the things that hit me is that data is showing that there's all kinds of products that you might buy in a whim. You get Instagram and you feel in a good mood and right. you hit on it. Data is showing that 80% of the stuff that's ordered that way never gets implemented and never ends up doing anything for anybody. It ends up sitting in the closet. It's used one or two times. In my garage, I have <laughs> boxes and boxes. My wife, and then you uh, have... my wife is a sucker for all these things. Yeah. She says, I, I'm, she tries to eat well, she tries to exercise. She's into her seventies now here. She's very cognizant of how her body's changing and she doesn't like it. And she's trying to fight back. She doesn't want to be like her mother and my mother and spending the last 10, 20 years in wheelchairs and walkers and all the other stuff here. So she really works at it, but she's always a sucker for these <laughs> things. Do this, buy this, this machine, this thing, this program. Well, you can tell thing. with your Well 12 program what, what doctor yeah. supervision and peer pressure does. Yeah, it, well, I don't know about peer pressure, but yeah. we call it yeah. group uh, group yeah. education and group <laughs> adherence. Peer but, pressure. But Come so, on, guys. So yeah. I run a program called Well 12, www.well12.health. Um, and it really is focused on therapeutic foods and, and that we have to not just change our diets, but also our mindset, sleep optimization, yeah. stress management. And that's really what unlocks um, your health, you know, and then and then supercharge that with the bioelectric stim and, and the lean heart kind of portfolio. But I was just telling Howard before we got started about one of my clients who um, was he needs knee surgery. He okay. needs a knee, sur knee replacement and he is too heavy right now to get that. And so he came to me asking, can you help me lose weight? I said, absolutely. You know, but realize it's not just about losing weight. We need to change your mindset and get your sleep right. Right. So in the first three weeks of the program, he dropped 25 pounds, um, which was great, and that's to be expected. But remarkably, his blood pressure dropped by 30 points. And 30 points? 30 points, wow. and, he had, and so we had to take him off of blood pressure medicine. And that's the power of, of you know, what diet, not just diet alone, but optimizing sleep, optimizing stress can do. And I think we just don't we, don't, we don't give it enough respect, right? We Our bodies want to be healthy. It's all these things that we do that give us these imbalances. And so, you know, he did the reps, he did the program, or he's doing the program, he had a great result. And, you know, for those that need more help or or really just want to supercharge this, adding the bioelectric stimulation, right, really is just a force multiplier here. What a great term, because that's what I picture. You're supercharging it. You're electrically supercharging my body. Does it hurt? <laughs> is there pain? No, is I mean, light you... shooting lightning through me? So what is... so what uh, Howard was saying, so it's below the contraction threshold. So you're not going to be like twitchy and, and yeah. looking like you're having a seizure. It'll feel like, like a light little massage like you know those like therapy guns and things yeah. so it probably will feel a little bit at like that at most but a lot of it happens below the what we call in medicine the pain thresholds so you're not going right. to feel it um but you you might be able to see a little bit of skin movement or something but you know it's really it, it, the amazing part of this right all is that like you said we've wanted these things with minimal effort now yeah. you need to have effort because right. you know as arnold schwarzenegger says in his book you can't pay someone else to do the reps for you and expect <laughs> to get this the benefit of the exercise exactly but you know what we can do is make our time more efficient right yeah. in the same way that my kids are laugh at me about the idea of a pen pal right that you would send a letter and two weeks <laughs> later you might get a letter back they're like dad why don't you just text them right <laughs> so we're able, to, we're able to use technology to get these results yeah. so much faster right yeah. and and that's really you know the, the amazing part of this is that you know not only do we focus on the dietary and lifestyle aspects but we're able to use your body to balance itself right we're able to optimize the things that need to be optimized and and like i said just kind of supercharge 
your recovery and that path to health. Well, I've met, I've known Howard through the years. I've seen his work here at UCI. We both, that's where our studio is located, and that's where his research is located at the ULP University Lab Partner. Shout out to them. Amazing stuff going on there. Med tech, uh, medicines, all the stuff that's being developed here at UCI and in this building in particular here. And the thing that always struck me about Howard is he has no patience, <laughs> no patience whatsoever. He doesn't want to wait two weeks for the letter to come back. Why can't we just do it right now? Why can't, <laughs> right. We, why can't, we, why can't we go back in time and then I can see what it's like? I don't know. You just uh, on a wrap. So my point of saying that is when Howard was in here just a couple months ago, well, we're going to do a med spa. You know, our vision is even bigger. We want to extend life. But let's start with just helping people improve the big six, the skin, the hair, the sexual function, the uh, all this stuff. Then we'll start get him to this idea of building a longevity plan and health span and diet and exercise and customized things. Let's just start with the things that they're paying for and complaining about right now and going to all these med spots. So he was going to open one, just one here in Orange County. And I thought, hooray, that'll be interesting. Nice test case, and we'll see how it works. And good scientists, 10 years from now, we'll have the data, and maybe we'll open the second one. And all of a sudden he comes in and says, no, we're opening 100. <laughs> It's like, how, how do you just, how do you just jump from, uh, I guess it's the idea of waiting. It doesn't work with you, Howard. It's, uh, you got to get right to it here. Time's time short. Well, to be honest, it was a conversation with John Selverson, a 40 year friend who is managing director of banking at uh, Piper Sandler in Minneapolis. Uh, he went to uh -huh. University of Minnesota, played hockey and- uh, Like you did. Uh, I, mean, you were, I, I, didn't, you I hockey. didn't play hockey for University of Minnesota. I wish I did, but- uh, yeah. Uh, We're both. Uh, I was born in Minnesota. You're from Minnesota, and right? I'm, I'm still playing hockey now. I'm in Thursday night league now. Okay, all right. <laughs> the the uh, he basically explained that if we wanted to really get this to as many people as we'd like to to extend their health span and and reverse their age ten years inside and out, we really had to scale. And uh, he indicated that if we uh, you know went to a license model or a franchise model and opened up numerous sites that. Not only we get critical mass of advertising, but critical mass to be able to become a public company, which is which is one of our goals. And right. uh, uh, so take they, this to the public, not right. just a few. Well, and then our outreach, like the number of people that we can treat, right, and the, mm -hmm. the number of lives that we can save, and the the number of grandmas that will see five more Christmases and grandpas that'll yeah. be able to throw their throw the football with their grandkids, oh, right? I mean, that's now you're hitting home here. Yeah, well, that's exactly. that's really what this is about, right? Like we are our, our metrics are, are, you know, like I said, life to years, right? Mm -hmm. So, so we want to be able to expand this to really democratize, you know, this shouldn't be something for the Silicon Valley people that can spend, you know, a hundred million dollars a month on these things. We right. want this to be something that everybody can enjoy. And that's that the everybody fear, that medicine will only be for the few and not for the public. That the because the actual lifespan is decreasing, I think, in the country for the first time in the last few years. We were living let because of stress and diet and all the other things that are and yet among the Uber wealthy their lifespan is going up and up because they can afford these things. Right. No. So that's that's why we want to expand this so quickly, is to really, you know, take it to. I grew up in a small town called Hobart, Indiana. Like, and and you wow. know, I want I want the people in Hobart. That is a small town. That, I think I went through there. <laughs> yeah. You. That's the place. Yeah. There's there's like a stoplight. You might have had a big stop. <laughs> but, that's what I remember. I was annoyed. Like, why are we stopping? <laughs> why does the stoplight here? <laughs> Uh, but, you know, we, we really want this, we want to affect as many lives as possible in a good way, right? Yeah. And you can't do that just here in Orange County. You right. have to be everywhere. So roll out quickly. We we're already over our time here. Roll out quickly, Howard, for us. Some of these med spas, your goal is to go over 100, 124 of them in the next couple of years. You're starting rather quickly. Orange County, Beverly Hills, San Diego, those are ones that are coming soon. But the first one is in New York. You're flying out to yep. New York tomorrow. This week is uh, we got a beautiful, amazing uh, facility in Midtown Manhattan, wow. and it grand opening is April 25th, this Thursday, at 6 p.m. Uh, absolute amazing facility. We've got a great staff of uh, six qualified nurses there, a medical director, and a, a social media marketing team. Mm -hmm. uh, so April 25th. 2024 is the opening of our flagship location in Manhattan, New York. Uh, May 10th, we're opening in Scottsdale with a modest facility. Uh, May 20th in Houston in joint venture with an existing med spa that's converting over to our platform. And then comes Southern California. Right. So June 19th, San Diego. June 21st, right here in uh, Newport Beach, Orange County at 4740 Van Carmen Avenue. Just uh, two or three stoplights away from here. About yeah. two. Right. I think it's uh, two miles away. 
uh, June 24th up in uh, Beverly Hills. And uh, we're bringing in a, a number of uh, trainers in for t that's why we did the three right in a row so that they could do some uh, special training right. uh, from the factories that make our equipment. July 15th, uh, oh, I skipped. Uh, July 8th, we're scheduled to open in Park City, Utah, in joint venture with an existing uh, med spa there as well. July 15th in Hamptons, New York. July 25th in London, London, England. Wow. August 15th in Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. And then uh, there's a bunch of other sites, Nashville, Minneapolis, Austin, Texas, uh, other spots in Florida. Because we haven't determined the, the place date you're yet. rattling off. This is where the this is where the good life is lived here. <laughs> well, uh, you know, these are all the places that people are prizing: Newport Beach, Beverly Hills, uh, Park City, Utah, the Hamptons, and all. The, the, you read about all these places. This is where. So you're starting there because obviously they've got the desire, they got the money, they got the maybe you get some celebrities and all this other kind of stuff. But I think the vision's to go wider, isn't it? I mean, you're really going to get into Middle America here. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you have to start big, right? And so that's why. But then, yeah, I mean, there is no reason that, you know, you see a Starbucks on every corner, you know, like, literally. Well, <laughs> there's, a, I, uh, there's a Starbucks that opened inside a Starbucks. Yeah. And both of them were <laughs> successful. But, but, you know, there's, you know, in the same way that when they this started, with, good when they started with that outlet, you know, Chicago and New York and DC and these big cities, you know, that's where, that's where the interest is. Right. right? And in a sense, what we're doing is creating a brand new market. Right. And so when you do that, you exactly. have to have, you have to start with the right people. Right. Like, like we're talking about Walkman and CD players and mm -hmm. things. Right. Like they were super Super expensive We've got some initially old in, the building. in the audio in the, in the, <laughs> in the room studio here. here yeah. So you know, initially, you know, it was it, you know, not everybody had a car phone, right? Now right. everyone's carrying a cell phone in their hand, right? right? So, so you know, we proof of concept certainly get it out there, and as the movement grows, as people realize that you don't have to live with age-related diseases, that there's things that you can do out there. At, when people realize that, you know, what I now know how to eat, not just I want to, but I know how to yes. eat better. I know how to sleep better. I know why stress is important. I know how, like when my joint hurts, and how I, I can feel better. And I some way right? to, to assist, a little assist, a little boost to my own efforts here. I got another way to supercharge what I'm doing so that it isn't all on me all the time and I'm always failing. Exactly right. I wanted to mention something in that direction. To, you know, when we, Dr. Les Miller, who you had on the show before, yeah, and right. Dr. Beaujois and myself, we, you know, what we really wanted to do was health spinal longevity. And w at first we were thinking, oh, taking away people's wrinkles on their skin and growing hair in their head and sexual health, uh, you know, that maybe isn't as serious as what we really wanted to do. Yeah, exactly. but, but what's really encouraging is data showing, body toning included, that when you help people to look younger, mm -hmm. they engage their health better. Interesting. There's some kind of thing that when people are overweight and not looking as well, they kind of give up on their health. Yes. And the two things are connected. Their out, outward appearance and their inward health are connected. Mm -hmm. And what we want to do is, is help them get on that track. And some of the stuff we do on the inside, you can't see. So you wouldn't know unless you were a scientist with biomarkers right. that it actually was doing anything. But when we get rid of wrinkles on the face and we grow hair, we restore sexual health, that shows up in a different way. Yeah. When your joints, your knees are no longer sore and you can walk on the beach and you can go play golf with your buddies, uh, then all of a sudden it, it, it's really showing up in your life. And all of a sudden you're embracing a healthier you. And all of our people are going to be trained on a messaging. They're going to be trained on orienting people who come in. They're going to be brainwashed until they tell us to stop <laughs> on – you know, orienting to a, a healthier lifestyle. And, right. and we're not saints. Uh, Sanjay and I might leave here and go to <laughs> beer together. Come and, on. Uh, and, Come uh, on. you know, we know that, that nobody's going to stick to the absolute super healthy diet all the time. Nobody's going to always exercise three times a week. Right. But any amount of effort and encouragement that we can provide that pushes you a little bit more right. in the direction of health is going to do some good. And if you can see some results, you go further. I, I right. used to call it the death spiral. You know, my parents, I saw them go into it. There was a point at which it hurt too much to exercise. They were too fat. They felt ashamed. They were embarrassed. And they did. They started to give up. And when they did, it just accelerated. The less my mother, when more my mother fell, the less she walked. The more less she walked, the more her legs blew up. Then she really hurt. Uh, the edema built up in her legs and stuff here. And then she really stopped moving. And then she became 
I can't prove it, but more demented and, and less desired to live and less interested in trying even anymore. She gave up along the way. And that was a long give up. It didn't go in weeks or months. It was years. And anything you can do, if you could have encouraged her to look in the mirror and say, hey, I'm looking better, I'm, or I'm not looking worse, at least, I think she'd be more open to trying more things and have done more things in life. That's what I'm guessing. And me too. Well, it's is mind-boggling. This is the cover of Time Magazine kind of stuff here. This is, I don't know, there's an analogy for my generation <laughs> won't even know what that means. What's a magazine? Yeah. Pick something. This is going to be a uh, blow up in a big way here. How do they find out more about it? Where do they learn about all this? This is lionheartlongevity.com. Is that where they go? That is right. And uh, please, uh, everybody in Orange County, uh, come to our grand opening June 21st, uh, 4740 Van Carmen Avenue. Beautiful, just off of the airport, John Wayne Airport. Yeah. Uh, Great uh, tree-lined streets. We've got a little golf course behind our our, uh, <laughs> our building. And uh, uh, Barry Savitz, who's a guest uh, here on your show, he has a, a real estate show. Huge. On yeah. OC Talk Radio. Say what's Barry Savitz. Yeah, Barry he's, yeah. uh, he's our building owner, and he's uh, oh, off to a great start. Oh, you're kidding me. Oh, fantastic oh, guy. Fantastic guy. all world is all real. we got to get you on Barry's show then here. Yeah. Oh, that would be fascinating to talk about because he's always looking for cutting-edge kind of stuff. Yes, he's got a million buildings He's a big commercial <laughs> real estate owner and developer and a broker in town here. and But he's always trying to find the next thing because that's what's going to be around and stay. And that ain't easy to find in today's world where buildings are going away. Anybody ever criticizing you for that? This is You're going back into brick and mortar world when the rest of the world is trying to shed all this stuff as quickly as they can, it seems like. Well, us? Yeah. Well, I mean, health is intrinsically a one-on-one -on -one thing, right? You can't right. you can't replace a doctor with a robot as much as you want to try. And, right. you know, I, I, I think that there is such a human element to this. You know, we were commenting before about being in studio with you, and there's just something to being in the energy field of other Amen. people. You know, we are all bioelectric beings, right? If we didn't have electricity, your heart wouldn't beat, your brain wouldn't think, your stomach right. wouldn't digest. And, and we go off these fields and, and, you know, kind of, that's why I love the idea of the bioelectrics that we do is that we are in a sense, hijacking in a good way or hacking into, I guess, yeah. the, the body's own system of life. Hacking it. It's a life hack. Yeah. Well, it's, it's biohacking at its best. Well, we got to turn off the electricity here in the room <laughs> and, and quit uh, transmitting because I don't know that I can take anymore. <laughs> I don't know that I can understand anymore. Thank I hope you will come back and tell us more detail as these things open and bring some examples, people who've gone through this, who started off saying, I don't know. It sounded fantastic. I wasn't sure I believed it or I could do it or try or had all these doubts and then went through it and, and have them tell their story and share their story, what they're seeing. Because I think that's part of it, too, the encouragement we all get from seeing what others do. I don't want to be the first. You do it. <laughs> we'll, we'll be right happy to bring before back. we rocked in here, we got data from Dr. Genovese that came out of our clinical trials showing uh, what was the reduction yeah, of blood pressure? 18, with bioelectric signaling, there's an 18 point drop in blood pressure, uh, which is essentially clinically Huge. like being on two blood pressure medicines. So, My wife suffers from high blood pressure, oh, yeah. and half the time she doesn't take the pill. And I say, why? And she says, I don't know. It, it makes me feel bad. Yeah, my, hair, my hair falls out, my exactly. skin gets dry. So. You know, that's the power of, of electric signaling is that we are seeing lasting effects without medicines, right? So wow. this is game changer. I like the way that you said Time Magazine. I don't know if it's still in print or not, but <laughs> that's, that's our Scientific American. But this is yeah. these are these paradigm shifts that we talk about that are happening right here at UCI. Yeah, and we're happy to report. And thank you guys for coming in. We look forward to having you come back. We have Howard Leonhart from Leonhart Ventures, which is doing Lionheart longevity.com and all these med spas and i'll try it one last time dr dr uh, sanjay bojraj boom wow you got it see old dog can learn <laughs> new tricks there you go. love it <laughs> thanks for coming in guys our pleasure thanks everybody Wow. I know we went over, folks, but it was worth it. What a conversation. Mind-boggling stuff here happening right here at UCI's Beale Applied Innovation Center, all of which we're happy to report upon Orange County's only community radio station, OC Talk Radio, streaming live.